What is a feast to a poor lieutenant? Is it a haversack full of rations? Is it a table piled so high with delicacies that you don't know when you could finish it? Or is it knowing that your commanding officer cares enough to make sure that you have what you need? The life of the lieutenant in the 18th century was more difficult than you can imagine. Getting the right kind of supplies and food was nearly impossible. Today, I want a victory for this lieutenant. We are going to make for him a feast. The position of the ensign and the lieutenant wasn't easy. Army officers in the 18th century had to purchase their commission. It wasn't based on their merit or their ability. They weren't given extra money necessarily to buy their rations. They did get a supply of rations, twice the amount that a standard soldier would get. But of course, they were officer material. These low-level officers were not just trying to survive, they were not just trying to perform well in the field, but promotion had partly to do with whether they looked like officers, whether they acted like officers, and whether their table was set like an officer. All those provisions that they would need, they had to purchase themselves. And if they were in a campaign situation, those things came very dearly, and they weren't able to supply them themselves. The situation Ben Franklin mentions in his autobiography, and he's having dinner with a Colonel Dunbar, and he finds out about what's going on with these officers. While I was at camp, supping one evening with the officers of Colonel Dunbar's regiment, he represented to me his concern for the subalterns, who he said were generally not in affluence, and could ill afford in this dear country to lay in the stores that might be necessary in so long a march through a wilderness where nothing was to be purchased. Benjamin Franklin wants to help these low-level officers out. He goes to the local government and there are some funds available to help with this military situation. He also talks to his son who has been in a military campaign situation and asks him to come up with this care package idea that he could give these officers. Six pounds of loaf sugar, six pounds of muscovado sugar, which is like brown sugar, a pound of green tea, a pound of black tea, six pounds of good coffee, six pounds of chocolate, a hundredweight of best white biscuits, a pound of pepper, a quart of best white wine vinegar, a pound, or no, it just says one Gloucester cheese, so one large round of cheese, a keg of 20 pounds of good butter, two dozen old Madeira wine, two gallons of Jamaica spirits, that's rum, a one bottle of flour of mustard, two well-cured hams, a one or two dozen dried tongues, six pounds of rice, six pounds of raisins, they make up these care packages, 20 of these all put together, and they give one to each one of these officers. We've got this great care package, and these soldiers need a win. So if we look at this care package, what can we make? The first item that pops right out for me is rice pudding. The bottom two lines, rice and raisins. Those are the main components for a rice pudding. We also have in the care package, butter and sugar. And that's about all we need for a rice pudding. So we're gonna work on one of those. I've got four ounces of white rice. I've got raisins, we'll put those in at the very end. We also have butter doesn't say in the recipe that we're going to be using, which is Amelia Simmons's recipe from 1796, exactly how much butter, but maybe two or three ounces. After our rice and butter, we've got sugar, and sugar was one of those things in that care package. This has already been pounded up. The sugar that would have come would have been in hard lumps or in cones of sugar, and you've got to kind of grind it up to get into a granulated sugar that we're used to. But we've got three ounces of sugar here. For our liquid portion, we've got milk, and we need one quart. This is a fancy pudding for our officers. Obviously, we need some spice in here. The Amelia Simmons recipe would have and did have allspice. We can, of course, add allspice into this. And I'm sure that care package, even though it didn't mention it, probably had a few nutmegs in it. So we're going to add some nutmeg too. We need a sprinkle of salt for this and the last that goes in, the raisins. I'm just going to put those kind of in on top. I don't want them to sink to the very bottom. I like them to be in the center of the pudding. And really the raisins are part of the, the sweetness of this pudding. In some cases, if you don't have any sugar, you could leave that out and the raisins would be the sweetness. 
we could bake it in our oven, but if we're on campaign like these soldiers were, they would probably have to bake them in something like the camp oven or the Dutch oven. That's what we'll do today. Bakes two hours at about 350 degrees. Nowadays, when we think about our military, we think about it being sort of a meritocracy. You have to have certain kinds of skills to move up in the military. Not so much in the 18th century. The subalterns that we're talking about here are the lowest level of officers. They're above the common soldier, they're above sergeants, and they're that layer just above those non-commissioned soldiers. They have a commission, something that they had to purchase. They didn't earn their way to that circumstance normally. They bought their way into that circumstance. And they're usually in charge of men that are older than they are, maybe have more experience than they do. So there's always some friction there. So the ensigns and the lieutenants that we're talking about here are below the captains, the majors, the colonels, the generals. And all of these men had to purchase their way into the service at that time. They had to have a lot of influence. And of course, the higher up they were, the better they had to look, the better they had to dress, the better they had to eat. The army is definitely two different worlds. That of the common soldiers and that of the officers. And they live in different buildings, they wear different clothing, they eat different food. And even within this officer world, there are these divisions. And these poor lieutenants and ensigns, they're at the very bottom. This is certainly different than what's happening in the Navy in the 18th century. In the Navy in the 18th century, you're not going to buy a commission. You might still need to have some influence to become an officer, but it's not nearly like what's going on in the Army. Another great thing about the list that Benjamin Franklin has is that all these items are good for long periods of time. These soldiers were going into the wilderness. There were no stores along the way. So if you are doing a military campaign and you're going from town to town, you don't need these kind of provisions because you would get provisions as you went along. These soldiers weren't able to do that. So we have things like the dry cured ham. We have cured tongue. We have cheese. We, even the butter is in kegs and salted so that it will last a long time. And the other great feature here is that many of these things we can eat as they are. They don't need to be prepared in any way. A lot of times on a military campaign, you don't have time to stop to make food or you're not in a situation where you can do that. And if you have provisions that you can just basically slice off and eat, then that's what you want. So ship's biscuits, whether you have uh, cheese, the ham, it's all just ready to go. We talked about ship's biscuit in the past and you know, it's not very appetizing. It's hard as a rock. But if you soak it in something like Madeira for a few minutes, well, it becomes quite edible. We also have great combinations on this list having to do with the ham, the mustard, and the vinegar. So the ham and the mustard go together. Of course, it's just mustard seed or ground mustard. We have to mix that with the vinegar to make a mustard sauce. Again, great combination. The care packages that Benjamin Franklin delivered to these soldiers, they were soldiers on campaign. They were moving from a civilized area to out into the wilderness. There was no resupply. They were living in tents with maybe just a very small bed and a blanket. They had very little food supplies with them. So these kind of condensed food packages were perfect for them. Unlike a soldier in a setting like this, where if you're in a fort, you probably have quarters, you have bunks or more likely beds, you've got as many blankets as you want, you've got a place to cook your food whenever you need to, a place to stay warm. A totally different situation. Another great combination that we've got in our ingredient list is the cheese, the butter, the mustard, and the wine, which will make a wonderful Welsh rabbit. So that's next up on the ingredient list. We only need a certain quantity of cheese here. I've got about a quarter of a pound of cheese, about an ounce or so of butter, a little dollop of mustard. We'll need a little bit of wine. Now, instead of Madeira, we're gonna be using a little white wine and we're gonna cook this over the fire. A Welsh Rabbit is a wonderful cheese sauce that you can use a couple of different ways. You can just spread this on toast if you'd like, or you can put this on bread and then toast it together. And sometimes they might call that toasted cheese, and it is so good. It's very interesting that Colonel Dunbar is talking to Benjamin Franklin about the problems with his lieutenants and ensigns. He doesn't really concern himself too much about the upper officers. He knows he has the right kind of supplies for regular soldiers and sergeants, but the ensigns and lieutenants, 
they have to take care of themselves. And that's where Benjamin Franklin really comes along. He's that go-between, the person who knows how to deal with everybody in Philadelphia and how to get whatever the army actually needs. And the situation happened slightly earlier with Braddock. Braddock needed all these wagons to go into the wilderness, and it was Benjamin Franklin who found him the wagons. And in this case, it was Benjamin Franklin who found the right kind of supplies to give these poor lieutenants so that they would be able to have the food they needed. This is the Poor Lieutenant's Feast, and it is very good. <laughs>